Watch, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Good morning, and welcome to St. Peter's Church on this first Sunday in Advent. On this day, as we gather from many places, and perhaps even many times, we gather together with one purpose, as we live into our mission here at St. Peter's, to share the gospel, to prepare disciples, and to care for our community. On this weekend of Thanksgiving, and as we turn toward the Advent season, it's our joy to welcome you among us, whether this is your first time with us worshiping, or your 500th time. I'm delighted you are here. We continue in this service with this invitation from the Book of Common Prayer. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth His praise, to hear His holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship Him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by His infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life.
a reading from Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down, so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you and your ways. But you are angry, and we sinned, because you hid from yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquities. Yet, O Lord, you are our father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquities forever. Now consider... We are all your people. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God 
that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you are called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The Word of the Lord. A reading from Mark. Jesus said, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather the elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branches become tender and put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. 
Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, Keep awake. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Poet Wendell Berry, in his collection, A Timbered Choir, once wrote this poem. The seed is in the ground. I will now rest in hope and let darkness do its work. Advent begins in the dark. That is something that I continually remind myself, which I have borrowed from the Reverend Fleming Rutledge, who many consider to be in the Episcopal Church the patron saint of Advent. Advent begins in the dark. And for me, there is an invitation as we consider the darkness this year to let that darkness do some work. I think of this earthy poem from Wendell Berry, this time of there being a seed that has been planted, that in the middle of all of this darkness, in this 2020 season, we continue to look for growth, we continue to watch for light. In the scripture we just heard from Isaiah, we as God's people can identify with this hunger in the middle of the darkness, in the middle of the silence, in the middle of this time of waiting for something new to grow. We pray with Isaiah. As we say, oh Lord, that you would come down, that you would tear the heavens apart and come among us and kindle a fire that boils the pot of water. I imagine many of us this Thanksgiving holiday were watching things boil or checking the turkey one too many times or for me, uh, checking the meetings on the thermometer. So we had a turkey uh, on our barbecue grill trying to smoke it. Something I haven't yet mastered is the art of being just patient, of practicing benign neglect when it comes to letting things rest, just letting things be. I see this Advent season as a particularly powerful one for me, and I hope it'll be a powerful one for you. It's a time in which we recognize that life is short. We recognize, as we have lost in this country, well over 250,000 people to the pandemic of COVID-19, that life is too short, that life is fragile, and what connects us can be easily wiped away. At least we think so. Those superficial things that we have counted on every year, those traditions, those things that we have come to love, 
those things that we've done because we've always done, done them that way. We've been forced to grow in new and different ways this year, haven't we? Doing Thanksgiving on Zoom, connecting over technology, worshiping together in Advent online. We're in uncharted territory. Once again, we are leading off the map. Marketing back to that journey with Lewis and Clark as they were hoping to get to the West Coast on the Missouri River, there came a point in which they got to the Continental Divide at the Lemhi Pass in Idaho and looked over the ledge and realized that the Pacific Ocean wasn't on the other side just yet. They had miles and miles and mountains to cross. I can't help but wonder if their hearts sank in that moment. And I know for many of us, this dark and cold time of year might be a time when our hearts might already be sinking just a little bit. That's where I hope we can rest in the darkness, to let it hold us just a little bit. Not to embrace the works of darkness as our collect, our opening prayer for this first Sunday of Advent would have us do. The works of darkness are the evil things of this world, and yes, we cast those aside. We reject those things which corrupt and destroy the people and creation. But we also recognize that there are things beyond our control, that there are things where we just have to sit and wait and watch and hope. This is a time in which we have to learn to see a little bit better in the dark. We have to let our night vision stretch a little bit. And I have an image for that. This summer I had a rare opportunity, at least rare for me, to go out to Block Island. I have a friend who has a house out there. And we were there um, helping close down this vacation home and prepare it to rent out so that uh, the house can do a little bit of work for that family. And I remember it was a particularly dark summer night. It was a new moon, and the stars were amazing. I was longing to watch the stars for a long time, and I went out on this patio but there was a particular challenge because at this house, someone had installed some battery-powered or solar-powered Christmas lights. And they were flashing and dancing, and they, they offered their own kind of joy in their own way. If you were looking, perhaps, from the ocean toward the house, looking for a sign of life, just like we're putting up Christmas lights now and we're driving our children around at night looking for a little bit of holiday cheer, I think those bits of light that we see glinting and dancing, they do add their own kind of joy. But that's the kind of thing you can see up close. What I was struggling with at this time, though, is the fact that those flashing lights were distracting me from seeing the bigger picture, the Milky Way, which was visible on this dark summer night. Stepping away from those lights and letting my eyes adjust to the darkness, there was so much beauty to be seen. Seeing what the heavens were up to on that beautiful dark sky. Seeing the stars appearing and ones I had never seen before, save for perhaps wilderness trips in the desert. There's something about this time where we are called to watch. And we're called to work, just as the Compline prayer in one of my favorites goes. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give the angels charge over those who sleep. All of us, in one way, shape, or form, are working, Perhaps we're watching. I know some of us are weeping for the losses we've endured thus far, the anticipatory grief of the hardness of a cold, dark season to come. But I'm reminded 
of the hope that comes from watching the darkness as our eyes adjust, as we see new stars. I'm reminded of the image of Robert Louis Stevenson, the English author, as a boy. He was a sickly child and spent a lot of his time in bed. And in the wintertime, there was a story where his nurse came in to check on him, and he was transfixed, staring out the window. He was watching a lamplighter walking down the street with the taper slowly lighting all of the oil lamps. Stevenson described this lamplighter as someone who was punching holes in the darkness. I think that's what we're watching for. We, in this time between our earthly existence as we understand Christ in history and mystery to have been born to the Virgin Mary, our Emmanuel who had come to dwell among us, we stand between that reality of time, the mystery and majesty of his presence among us here and now in mysterious ways that we experience in bread and wine and in our prayers. We wait for the majesty of his coming again in power and great glory among us, reconciling all things at the end of creation. We stand at the window, looking out at the darkness, watching for glints of light, holes being punched in the darkness. We, like Wendell Berry, are watching the topsoil, waiting for seeds that have been planted to break new ground, to bring forth life out of all that waiting and hoping and expecting. This is an advent unlike any other, and at the same time, it's an advent exactly like every other, because every year, each of us comes to this time and this place waiting and hoping and expecting something new. This is a wonderful season because we give over to God a sense of control. We've just white-knuckled it through the holiday season of Thanksgiving. Perhaps we've worn our fingers and our eyeballs a little bit raw from scrolling and trying to do online shopping. We've struggled with things beyond our control. And we, like the people awaiting God's presence in Isaiah, are here asking for a rescue. This Advent theme begins in darkness every year. And yet together, we'll get through these. Together, we watch for the light. And together, we journey toward Bethlehem in the hope and in the knowledge and in the trust that Christ will come again. So friends, as we begin this Advent unlike any other, I wonder what seeds have been planted in your life? What is the soil of our souls been planted with? What might be bubbling to the surface? What new life might we look for in this time? I don't have the answers. But I hope that together as a community of fellowship and prayer, we can reflect on this Advent journey together, recognizing that new growth is indeed happening, that new life is present among us, that God's message of rescue and forgiveness and mercy is as powerful and as true today as it ever has been as we wind our way toward Bethlehem, a star will lead the way. The darkness will do its work. And once again, you'll see the face of the light of Christ in the form of a baby born on the margins in Bethlehem. I look forward to this time as we journey together and can't wait to see what the soil brings forth.
And now we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And us thy
Since our country experiences yet another more dramatic surge in cases than we've ever seen, the COVID-19 pandemic, we lift up all those who have died, all those who are sick, all those who have family who are sick. We lift up all frontline workers in medicine. We lift up all those who are part of our education systems, all those who are exposed day in, day out to other people, those people who can't stay home and stay safe the way many of us can. God, you were born on the margins as a vulnerable baby to deliver us. Please deliver these vulnerable people in their grief, in their fatigue, in their struggles, and in their vocations. They may be protected by you and live in your care and in your service this day, this week, and always. Amen. We lift up those in our community who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. And in this time of giving thanks, we give thanks for all of you, all of us who are connected uh, to the St. Peter's community. Again, whether you are new or whether you've been with us a long time, it's an incredible opportunity for us to worship together. And as we lift up those with birthdays, we offer up this prayer. O oh God, our times are in your hand. We'll look with favor, we pray, on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may continue to grow in your knowledge and love, and that they may grow into your full stature. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. For those celebrating anniversaries, we offer this prayer. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual communion between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants as they begin another year together. That their love for each other may abide and abound that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace, and that this love, made outward and visible, might be a sign to all of us of your love for all your beloved children. All this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. Amen. We have much to give thanks for in this community. We lift up those with gratitude who joined us uh, for a community check-in this past week on Zoom. It was a wonderful experience of community together as we broke out into small groups and talked about what has gotten us through this time thus far, what we're thankful for and what we're praying for. We'll look forward to doing that again in a more formal way uh, this month. We might do that as a monthly event. But as always, we have a coffee hour on Zoom where we can do a version of the same thing. So if you have time, I invite you to join us at 11 o'clock on Zoom uh, as we check in about what's going on with us this week, what we can pray about together, uh, and uh, what wonderful recipes we tried uh, in this new pandemic Thanksgiving. I hope that's enough to talk about. Looking forward to seeing you there. I also wanted to invite you to worship with us in a new format starting this evening at 5 o'clock. We're going to be using the Zoom platform in a new way to say Compline together. It's a beautiful evening prayer service. It's simple, it's beautiful, it's meditative, and it's a perfect thing as things get dark a little early. It's a wonderful way for us to be in dialogue with each other and a more participatory way to worship where we hear each other's voices and see each other's faces as we make this worship happen together. So that'll be five o'clock on Zoom every Sunday in Advent, and we'll just see where things go from there. But looking forward to that. I also invite you to consider a formation opportunity on Wednesday nights at seven o'clock 
with Dr. David Kelsey as we look at the Incarnation, as we think about Christ who came and took on flesh and dwelled among us. We talk about the theological significance of that and how that changed the world and continues to be a central piece of our theology. So looking forward to that Bible study and conversation. We'll do three weeks of Bible study in Advent, and we'll continue in the Epiphany season, in that season of Incarnation. So that'll be a wonderful treat. That information will be available on our website. Uh, so please go to stpetersmilford.org for more info there. I can't wait to see you there. Give thanks for all the blessings of this life. And we continue with the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you would be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us and those for whom we pray, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Receive this blessing. Life is short. We do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who traveled away with us. So be swift to love, make haste to be kind, and may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this Advent season and always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask for or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.